Hey, I'm Sam. And I'm Rachel. We're the creators of Plant School. Rachel's going to be teaching me, a plant novice, everything I need to know about plants, plant care, and gardening, all in a way that anyone can understand. Yeah, whether you have never touched a plant or you consider yourself an expert and you want to just learn more, this podcast is for you. And though it sounds simple, there's actually a lot to cover. So what are you waiting for? Join Join us us in in Plant plant school. School. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 17 of Plant School. Today we will be talking about caring for Christmas plants. Um, How did this episode come to be, Rachel? Yeah, so one of my really good friends, Mikkel, um, suggested this. So she first suggested um, caring for the Nor- Norfolk Island pine. Norfolk. Norfolk Island pine. Um, and then later she messaged me and she's like, I had this thought that you should do just all Christmas plants. Um, and I thought it was brilliant. So we're going to be covering Norfolk Island pine, um, the poinsettia and the Christmas cactus. Cause those are probably the three most common plants you see for sale this time of year. Um, but yeah, so it was an amazing suggestion by her and I really appreciated it. Um, also, she's an amazing artist. If you guys are into art, like one of a kind, she does a lot of stuff for like different states. Um, she does like little mini series of all these national parks. It's really cool stuff. Um, she just did a series about space and stars. But anyways, her handle on Instagram is Mick period art period goods. And you can find her there and she has some really amazing art. So thanks to her for this episode that we'll be doing today and actually our next episode because there was so much good stuff that we are splitting this into two. Hence why this is uh, coming out on a Friday instead of Thursday because it yeah. took Rachel We'll a probably bit come out to... our Thursday night. Yeah. But yeah, I fell asleep while prepping for it. That exciting, <laughs> huh? Oh, it I was just tired. It was a long day, and there was just so much good stuff, and as I was going through that good stuff, I fell asleep. But I'm excited to talk about it. Okay. Oh, and lastly, crazy thing before we start. That was a big yawn. Um, (laughs) Me and Sam were at Walmart the other day with our children. We didn't leave them behind. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah, and we walked in and we literally walked past these three plants that we'll be covering in these next two podcasts. And I was just like, oh my goodness, like a sign yeah. from heaven. <laughs> no. Walmart is not a sponsor. No, unfortunately but not. But they... it's just crazy. You will see these plants for sale everywhere. It was literally like poinsettias, Christmas cactus, and Norfolk Island pine all at the entrance of Walmart. Um, and so you can you can find them anywhere this time of year. At least in the United States. <laughs> if you can find them at Walmart, you can find them anywhere. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? basically <laughs> the way it works. <laughs> okay. So, you mentioned the Norfolk Island Pine. Do you know that the first time I visited the East Coast of the U.S. was Norfolk, Virginia? Is that really how they say it? I think that's how they say it. That's From what I remember, I think that's what how they say it. Because they have no southern idea. accents their awesome accents there yeah um but yeah i, I would say norfolk and they would you know when i got my you. itinerary and when i got there everyone was like no it's norfolk but i can't remember if that's exactly what they would say because it's been a few years but anyway that's cool i didn't know that you had gone there yeah yeah it's a big uh, military base there well so. i'm gonna say norfolk <laughs> Yes, I want to say Narvark. <laughs> Nardvark. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the Norfolk Island Pine. Let's go with that just to make it easy. What's the uh, history of this, okay. this plant? This is like my favorite question to start off. I love knowing the history of these plants and like Buckle your seat where belts. they came from. Strap on in. <laughs> Rachel's getting in the history bus. Um, so the Norfolk Island pine is native to Norfolk Island. Imagine that. Oh, that's Um, the history. Okay, let's move on. No, 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 no. There's so much more. 
So it's actually considered endemic to that area, which means that it only grows on this little island natively. Did you say epidemic? No endemic. Okay. Thank goodness. So yeah, Norfolk Island is in the South Pacific Ocean between New Caledonia and New Zealand. So it's kind of out there. It's a very like Mediterranean climate. So that's why these plants do well in our homes. Unless you're in New Zealand, then it's right there. Not way out there. It's it's right true, there. True. True. I'm talking <laughs> from Utah in the United States. Like a Hawaiian shirt to Hawaiians is just a shirt. That's true. Yeah. Well, <laughs> good. Good insights Anyways, coming out here. But it's from, oh no, I looked up how to say this. You guys would not believe how many times I have to go to like dictionary.com to like make sure I'm pronouncing things right. But it's from the Aria... Aria Cariaceae family. There we go. Where does dictionary.com go to make sure it's pronouncing it right? Wow. What a deep question. I don't know. Food for thought. (laughs) I don't know. They go to Mr. Webster himself. Ask Jeeves. (laughs) Don't bring that up. (laughs) Um, So... This island, Norfolk Island, was found by James Cook in 1774. He saw these trees growing. They are very straight and symmetrical. If you have owned one or seen them, they're they're very striking looking because of how symmetrical they are. Um, they're very cute. I think they're adorable. Um, but anyway, so he saw them. He thought they would make great um, masts for ships. So he thought, oh, we can harvest these trees and, like, create this whole industry um, of making ship masts. Do you have a question? No, sorry. I... Okay, no. I thought I thought maybe it's something to say. But anyways, it didn't end up working out for James Cook because the, the wood wasn't strong enough for ships. Um, anyways, apparently their history goes back way, way further, not just to Norfolk Island, But there are actually members, like ancient members of this tree's family that have been found in Arizona in the National Petrified Forest. Um, Or it's a national park. Petrified Forest National Park. There we go. Um, So anyways, there are just ancient um, forests of this family, this um, plant family. And apparently dinosaurs once ate the ancestors of the Norfolk Island pine. Um, it's not a true pine, which I don't know why we do that. Why do we give common names that don't mean what they mean? Um, but we do it. Like a parkway. You don't park on a parkway. You yeah, park. exactly. Yeah. And a driveway. Do no, you, you don't park? drive on a driveway. <laughs> yeah. You park on a driveway. Mm, yes. So anyways... Norfolk Island pine is not a true pine, um, but in its native environment, so if you were to see one on Norfolk Island, they can grow up to 200 feet tall, so massive, massive, and their trunk in diameter can be as thick as 10 feet, um, and they've been known to live up to 150 years. So, they will not get that big in your house, which is probably a good thing if you take <laughs> up your whole house. They grow very slowly in indoor conditions just because it's not what it's used to. Um, And I also was reading that, uh, you know, sometimes um, people get worried that like, why are we taking this plant out of its native environment? But the Norfolk Island pine is not threatened by the houseplant trade. So I think it's just a sorry excuse for people to make it a houseplant. Make what? That's just what people say. Oh, it doesn't threaten it. I want it as a houseplant. That could be. That very well could be. But I don't know. I don't know. That's what I that's what I read, but yeah, maybe it Conspiracy. was just someone. Okay. So past the history. Mm-hmm. Anything else? No. No, I'm good. That okay. was that was what Got I it learned. Out of you. All right. How do you water this thing? You get a can and you dump the water. What onto. what does it need <laughs> for water? Is it does it is it a camel? Does it need a ton? Is it a camel? Or is it a picky two year old who hardly touches his 
Yeah, so it needs its soil moist. Um, kind of, I feel like this is the standard with most all house plants, unless it's a very deserty plant. Um, but this plant is, it needs you to water it when you notice that the soil is dry. That's kind of the standard thing that you should be doing with all your plants. You check the soil. If it is damp, don't water it. If it's um, dry, then go ahead and give it a drink of water. Your soil should be well draining. Um, if it dries out too much, it is likely that your Norfolk Island pine will drop off branches. And these branches, unfortunately, do not grow back. Um, so I read that a pebble tray is a really good idea to kind of increase the humidity because if you think about it, they grow on an island on the coast. They are used to a lot of humidity. Um, if you notice that the plant has any sort of browning on higher up branches, not just like the old ones that will naturally brown, um, that can be from it being underwatered, overwatered, or not getting enough humidity. So water is very important for the Norfolk Island pine. You've got to be very careful not to give it too much, not too little, and it needs some in the air. It needs humidity. Seems like a lot of pressure on a yeah. new plant care. Or... I know. It's honestly, as I was preparing this podcast, I think it's kind of mean of the houseplant industry to push these Christmassy plants on us because literally all of them are just so heightening. I was like They're reading bound it. to die after yeah. Christmas. Exactly, yeah. I was reading about them and I was like, my goodness, I don't know if I want to take any of these guys home. Like they're kind of they're kind of hard. But they're cute. That's the problem. They're just so cute. Anyways, that's all I have for watering. Not cute when they're dead. No, that's true. Alright, what kind of sunshine does this thing need? <laughs> So it needs a bright, cool location. Again, you think about where this plant is native. It It's on the coast where it's kind of cool. Um, so it can have direct sunlight, um, though it doesn't love too much heat. So don't put it by a furnace. Don't put it by like an air vent. Um, why did you laugh? I just imagine your plant catching on fire <laughs> by like a... Like a like, like a, a dried like out a Christmas fireplace tree. Or, yeah. Yeah. Could happen. Probably not with a live plant. Um, but having enough light helps the Norfolk Island pine kind of keep that strong symmetrical growth. Um, it's suggested that when you water it just to kind of rotate it so that it's getting light on all sides and it keeps up having that nice growth. Um if it's not getting enough light, oftentimes it will get a little bit droopy or it can lose branches. Um, so yeah, bright, cool location. Um, it can have direct sunlight if it wants some. Can you imagine if we just lost our limbs if <laughs> we didn't get enough sunshine? <laughs> I think there'd be a lot of limbless people in this world. It's like, yeah, I lost my fingers yesterday because of been three days since i've been outside <laughs> uh, all these people working from home yeah. they would lose all their yeah. little limbs yep, that'd be me yeah that would just be ahead at this point <laughs> oh my gosh it's <laughs> terrifying to think about <laughs> anyways is that all for sunlight any yes it is okay um what about fertilizing this thing how do you go about fertilizing it so it's not too needy on fertilizer, thank goodness, because it's needy in some other areas. Um, but I read that about one to two times a year with just like a general 20-20-20 fertilizer is... Did you a, just say 2020? Yes, is that like Don't a, ever say 20. <laughs> I know, it's been a rough year. But anyways, if you fertilize um, with that just once or twice, it should be good. And like I always talk about with fertilizing, if your plant is having like amazing growth and just, you know, sprout in a way, maybe fertilize it a little bit more. If it doesn't seem to be changing or growing much at all, it probably is not going to need much fertilizer. Okay. 
What about repotting it? When do you know you should be repotting it? Is it similar to other house plants? Yes, it is. So Norfolk Island pines, if you notice roots peeking through the bottom of your pot, or it's just seeming like there are, like roots are coming, um, you can see them on the top of the soil, you're going to want to repot it to a pot that's about one to two inches bigger than the one it's already in. It's usually when I need to know, it's usually when how I know when I need to change our boys' diapers when I start seeing some poop creaking out, creeping out of their <laughs> Oh my diapers. gosh. So I just repot them. Yeah, you know, you don't even have to do that though because <laughs> you can just smell them from a yeah. mile away. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it reminds me of one of our friends uh, posted on Facebook about how they went to go check their son's diaper and in the check... They stuck their finger down a little too far and got poop on their finger. Ah, that's the worst. I've been there. It is not fun. (laughs) Or it's just like an innocent check. You think you smell something. And yeah, sure enough, like right at the lid of their diaper. It's poop. Poop's just there, just waiting for you. Yeah. It's like a mouse trap. That's why plants are nice, because they don't poop. Yeah. That is so nice. You peek for their roots, no poop's going to get at you. We would never have a house plant. No, we wouldn't. (laughs) Okay, what about propagating it? If you want to make a clone of a Norfolk Island. Yeah, so it's, mm, at least from what I read, it's not super easy. Obviously, you can grow them from seeds. Um, That is an option. Um, Interestingly, you can take their lateral branches um, and cut it. And if you put it in soil, it will continue to grow horizontally and will never produce like a stem that goes up um, vertically, which I just think is bizarre. It almost grows like, I don't know, like a, like a snake just (laughs) slithers along. Anyways, another way that you can propagate um, a Norfolk Island pine is through air layering. Sam, do you remember anything about air layering when we talked about it? Uh... I mean, I, I remember, but you should probably explain for, <laughs> right, right, for right. podcast listeners. So, although I've heard that this doesn't always work with the Norfolk Island pine, it's um, a little difficult to do. Air layering is a way to propagate your plant by you, basically you get a knife, you cut off a little layer of bark around. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you remember it now, mm-hmm. right. Oh, I, I know. Anyways, you cut off a little layer of bark around one of um, the branches. Not the main branch. I don't think that would be the greatest of ideas. Mm -mm, Yeah. (laughs) Thank you, peanut gallery. Um, (laughs) So anyways, take off a piece of bark around one of the... What's that? What's the word I'm thinking of? A lateral branch? Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay. Um, Anyways, and once you do that, you can go ahead and take... Um, some soil and you wrap it around that exposed bark and wrap that in saran wrap so it's kind of like this little ball of soil sitting around the piece of bark that you've just exposed and eventually um, little roots will start to come out Um, we kind of went over the science of this in a past episode about propagation in depth so if you want to know more about it you can go back and listen Um, but anyways the cells will de-differentiate and become root cells and start growing roots. And after a while, and you're like watering this little ball of soil that's taped onto your tree and saran wrapped on, um, roots will start to come. And once you see them, you can go ahead, you pull off, you know, the soil and you go ahead and snip it off so that you can take it off and place it in its own pot as an entirely new plant entirely new tree so that is an Mm. option with the norfolk island took the words right out of my mouth that's that's a great explanation of air layering from what i remember i'm sure you would have said the same thing as i just did um, yeah yeah. you put it a little differently than i would have but i think you were spot on thanks sam okay are there (laughs) any other uh random facts that you wish to spout out about I do. This? I do wish to spout off a few. So get it, spout. I don't get it. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> sprout. Sprout, yeah. Sprout out. So close, so uh, close. Dang it. Oh, so 
Some other random facts, Norfolk Island pines, um, because they are kind of known as like a Christmassy sort of tree, oftentimes they can be spray painted green, um, which I don't think is very nice, but they do it anyways, make it look good, or they will spray paint it with glitter. Um, it can make a mess, and it can also interfere with their ability to photosynthesize and harm them. So if you are going out to buy one, maybe just take a closer look um, because that green paint or the glitter can kind of interfere with that. I'm sure you could wipe it off if you really wanted. Um, but I would, if I were out buying one, I'd probably just try and avoid it altogether. Um, and last thing is if you are trying to prune this tree, you do not want to prune the top. Only prune off dead branches. If you prune off the top, um, I believe like it will not regrow and there won't be another a stem to like take its place as the top. Um, oh, I'm apical branch. What is an apical branch oh, is just yeah. the one that mm. takes over mm -hmm. and grows towards the top. It's kind of like the leader yeah. of a tree or of a house plant. Um, not all house plants. That was, I probably shouldn't have said that. Most house plants do not have an apical stem. Got a lawsuit coming now. I said that. <laughs> Anyways, just I'm gonna just stop. Just don't <laughs> cut off the top of your Norfolk, Norfolk Island pine, okay? Um, and that is that for that um, plant. That is that for that. That is that for that plant. <laughs> okay, we will take a quick break and. You want to give a sneak peek what plant we're talking about next? We're going to be talking about the Christmas cactus. And we'll be going over my favorite question first. What's its history? So, stick around. Don't go away. Quick break. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Okay, Rachel. Let's talk about the Christmas cactus. I wonder why it's considered a Christmas plant. If it's called the Christmas cactus. I know, crazy, right? Yeah. I'll tell you. In its history, I actually oh. do have the answer to that question. Yay. Oh, it wasn't a question, but I have the answer to that comment. Um, so this plant originates from the coastal mountains of southeastern Brazil. Yay. Is that o a Pessoal de Brasil? I don't know what you're saying. Vamos lá. I still don't know. Let's go to Brazil. Vamos. Vamos. <laughs> Vamos. Sim, sim. Vamos lá. I'm obviously really great at Portuguese, everyone. So, this is another coastal plant. Um, but anyways, it grows near the Atlant Atlantic Ocean, um, where it's re relatively cool, shaded, high humidity. Um, so, it kind of has similar needs to the Norfolk Island pine. Um, it was cultivated as long ago as 1818 in Europe, um, and it was prized for their fall and winter blooms. So kind of the whole reason why they are called a Christmas cactus is because they start to bloom with Thanksgiving and Christmas. I guess Thanksgiving is not like a, a worldwide holiday, but it coincides with the Christmas holiday. Um... It became very popular again because it kind of died down um, after it was cultivated in 1818. But in the 1950s, it became very popular once again in the houseplant industry. Um, and it's kind of stayed that way since. Um, the Christmas cactus is actually an epiphyte, um, which means it will grow on other plants, which is really interesting. And it can live for up to 20 to 30 years. Yeah. But will it live 20 to 30 years in someone's house? Probably not. Probably. I don't know. I guess if you're very diligent, it, it could. It could last you almost 30 years of Christmases. That'd be nice. You have to go pay however much. How much do these things pay? How much does the Norfolk Island plant cost about? Um. So I didn't look at the prices I should have when we were at Walmart, but looking online, it looks like they run from about 
as low as like $15 all the way up to like 70 I would say though for most you're probably gonna th- see, probably gonna see them see <laughs> them around like $30 range and then for Christmas cactuses uh, probably pretty similar, maybe like a little bit cheaper, maybe more around like $15 to $20. Okay, so if it dies before 30 years, then it's not. not yeah, you're deal. fine. Yeah. <laughs> you're not breaking the bank. Okay, uh, what kind of uh, light does this plant need? Yeah, so it needs bright, indirect sunlight Um, despite it being a cactus, it actually doesn't do great with too much sunlight. Um, if its leaves start to kind of turn red, have a red shade to it, um, that's usually a sign of leaf burn and it needs to be moved out of direct sunlight. So, yeah. Okay. So bright, indirect sunlight. What about its watering needs? Um... For the Christmas cactus, you want to be watering it when the soil is dry. You don't ever want this plant's soil to be really soggy. Um, you, It's going to help you to have drainage holes because um, it is prone to a lot of different kinds of rot. There's uh, basil stem, basil, like basil like the bottom, not like basil as in like the, <laughs> the herb. Is, yeah. that, is that how you say it? Basil? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, I, I don't know what basil I've never used. Anyways. Anyways. The um, base of the stem. Yes. There's also other kinds of rots. There's like impatience, necrotic spot virus. Um, photo- I'm just going to skip that one. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Photophthora? Phyt- <laughs> <laughs> that sounded right. Photophthora. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of Megamind when he can't pronounce. <laughs> Unfath- unfathom. Without <laughs> fathom. Yeah, exactly. That is me right now. Um, but it's also prone to Pythium root rot. I do know how to pronounce that one. Um, but anyways, so that just, I'm showing the point that overwatering can activate a lot of those root rots and kill your Christmas cactus. Um since it is kind of a coastal plant again over there on you know in eastern brazil or southeastern brazil humidity can help this plant so like a pebble tray or a humidifier um will help it do well gotcha southeast brazil that's like sao paulo and rio Just oh, okay so you can picture it that helps me because i don't know very many cities in brazil you should get to know it sometime. It's a pretty cool country. Um, what are some of its fertilizing needs? Um, so it is. It needs to be fertilized about two to three times a year. Um, I recommend using a 10-15-10 fertilizer. Um, once again, if it's growing like crazy, maybe fertilize it more for like the three times a year. If it's not growing a lot, maybe only once or twice a year. Um, It kind of just depends where you have it placed. Most plants are growing more actively during the springtime, during the summertime when there's lots of sunlight. So that's a great time to be fertilizing them. So this season when you're buying them, you don't need to worry about that sort of thing. Okay. It'll it'll end up dying before you need to fertilize. Is that what you're saying? (laughs) (laughs) No, I hope not. Okay. Um... The repotting question. When's the diaper full? (laughs) Yeah, so I was reading, usually it's about every one, one to two years when the root ball has kind of filled the pot. If you start to see it at the top of the soil or at the bottom coming (laughs) out, definitely repot it. (laughs) Just imagine a full diaper now. It's a beautiful, beautiful image to have. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, We're just cruising through these. What about soil needs? What kind of soil? So because it is a cactus um, and a coastal cactus, it loves more sandy soils. So if you are repotting it and looking for what kind of soil to buy, I would recommend picking up a succulent mix because those are often more sandy soils 
that have better drainage for these guys and that's kind of what they like and how they thrive so yeah nice. did we talk about soil for the norfolk i don't plant? think i yeah, specifically plant. did um but I would imagine it would be kind of the same. I did mention that it needs a well-draining soil. So if you pick up one that kind of has a high s sand content, it will also do well with that. So even like a succulent mix would probably work pretty well for a Nor Norfolk Island pine. Um, so this isn't my question, but you have it here. Can you make it reflower? Yes, so the Christmas cactus is like well known for having just like a ton of flowers all over it. Um, and this is where I just kind of laugh because these plants get so complicated. In our next episode, we are just going to be talking about poinsettias. And I swear that is just like such a complicated house plant. And it's so interesting to me, but the Christmas cactus is kind of similar. Um, if you want it to keep producing flowers, you need to like give it a resting period. Um, it's recommended to rest it twice a year. And by resting it, I mean you take it and put it in a cooler room than it normally is in for about eight weeks. And it's going to need probably less water it should not be getting any light at night if you want those blooms to come in nice and thick. Um, basically, put it in a cooler and a darker room. And when you are starting to see buds start to come out after those eight weeks, move it back to where it used to be, where it's, you know, sunny um, and getting everything it needs. Um, yeah, the flowers just start to develop when it's away from heat or sources of hot air basically is how it works but that just sounds like a lot of work you know what yeah. i mean i feel like i'd forget about it yeah, yeah i definitely would that snake plant we bought i don't know if i've touched it i don't even remember where i put it just kidding it's right next to our tv i but... would hope so <laughs> yeah. yeah um it is a christmas cactus does that mean it's a pokey plant with needles like a normal cactus yeah i do believe it has some little spines um but overall it's not very pokey at all there are some um different types different uh, species of it that are very pokey but the one that they're selling at the grocery store is generally very smooth it's not too pokey um that reminds me the genus of this plant i thought was just such a funny name it's schlumberga <laughs> sounds like a sounds like Dwight, a german like, dish yeah, like so. yeah. <laughs> building kinder yeah it's kind of fun to say Sh say it again Sh schlum Sh oh i said it wrong it's schlumbergera schlumbergera like hamburger hamburger yeah Anyways. Um, yeah, not Schlumberger. I guess that's a, Schl it's an oil company. <laughs> Schlumberger. That's what it is. Um, okay, so what if I love the Christmas cactus so much I just want another one? Well, How Sam, you can propagate it. Oh my goodness. How do I do that? <laughs> so you're going to take a cutting. So the Christmas cactus, they kind of have like these segments um along its stem right like little right they're like little cactus pads mm -hmm. so you're going to take off one to four of these segment segments <laughs> what did i say segments <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> it's getting like good thing that we're almost done so take one to four of these segments let them stop it let them sit on a cool dry place for two to four days that's just to kind of like help the wound that you just opened heal over. Uh -huh. <laughs> Rat <Rat-bail. laughs> And then stick it in some well-draining soil and it will start to root. And it's as simple as that. You can add like a couple of them to one pot to kind of create multiple stems coming out all at once. I think that would be kind of cool instead of just one single one. Um, but yeah, you can do that and create a whole new plant. Kind of cool kind of it's awesome 
<laughs> um, are there any other random, random fact tidbits? toids facts that you'd like to yeah, just sprout out? <laughs> For those of you who may own one and maybe need some troubleshooting tips, um, the Christmas cactus is sensitive to when it is moved. So buds will drop either when it's been moved recently, if it has incorrect watering, like too much or too little, it will start to drop buds. Or if there's lots of like fluctuating temperatures going on, if it's, you know, in an entryway or if it's um, by like a heater, buds will start to drop off. And, oh, I mentioned earlier, right, that leaves can turn red if there's too much sunlight, correct? I think I did. I don't remember, but... Thanks for listening, I, Sam. I know uh, humans turn red when we get too much sunlight, <laughs> that so That is makes true. Sense. Yeah, so if you notice them turning red, definitely move it out of uh, the direct sunlight, maybe, that it's getting. But other than that, I feel like um, that kind of covers it for the Christmas cactus and the Norfolk Island pine. And like I said, the poinsettias, I was... So I was researching them... Sam was watching me type, and I was just getting, like, our podcast was going to be forever long. Yeah, this would have been a uh, an ebook, uh, an audiobook, yeah. instead of a podcast episode. Yeah, so we decided to cut it in half. Poinsettias have such, such an interesting history and the way they grow. So I'm really excited to talk about it next week. Um, and so if you have one somehow i know they're like gifted a lot and everything um hopefully this will help you guys take care of your poinsettia next week but yeah i'm awesome. excited for it i don't know if sam is but i am i am so stoked it'll be awesome blossom i can just feel your excitement yep Anyways, yep. thank you guys for listening. As always, we really appreciate you guys supporting us by being here and listening to our podcast. Yep. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Well, we won't see you, obviously. Listen. We will... Uh... We'll be here next <laughs> week. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Be sure to follow our podcast on Anchor, Spotify, or Pocket Cast. Also, you can follow us at Tinny Plants on Instagram, Pinterest, or YouTube. Once again, that's Tenny Plants, T-E-N-N-E-Y Plants. If you have any questions or suggestions for future podcast episodes, email us at tennyplants at gmail.com. Or if you're on YouTube, go ahead and comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.